Alright guys, so today we're going to do a revised sexing video on how to sex your tarantula. I got a lot of people that are asking me uh, to make a video. I already did a video on it, but you know, since I did one back all the way in March, I figured I should give you some uh, a revised uh, form of it, so it'll be fresh in your minds and uh, be fresh for me. So today we're going to be learning how to eventual sex a tarantula. So um, let's get to it. How do you like my pokey drawing? Well, sort of. Okay, so this is what you call a dorsal shot. So this is where you see the tarantula like when it's not upside down. So I'll give you an example. My therapho is a blondie. That's a dorsal shot of it. This is a dorsal and dorsal. So you get the idea. A ventral shot is the underside of a tarantula. So I'll give you an example. This is what you call a ventral shot of the tarantula. So this is my mature male Tapanikinius gigas, the orange tree spider. The question that comes to mind is, what can you sex accurately and what can't you sex accurately? So, like for example, like my Tapanikinius gigas, he's about 3 inches, he's sexable. And my mature, well not mature yet, but uh, Juvie uh, P. Miranda, that's sexable. And Adults like this, this is sexable and sexable. So now, unsexables are the following. Slings that are like half an inch to about a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> you can't really sex them very accurately. And it's almost impossible to uh, sex them correctly. You know, when you're buying unsexed tarantulas, it's a 50-50 shot. You can either have a male or a female. They don't, there's no other sex that exists between them. So, what I would do usually is if, uh, if you have the money, I would buy multiples of slings and hopefully you get a male and a female and then you can breed. That's the risk you're willing to take. So, let's say for an example, uh, you can get just two spiderlings and uh, go to be mature males like my Tabnikinius gigas. Both of them I raise as a quarter inch uh, spiderlings and uh, both why not to be a mature male. So, talk about bad luck for me on my part. I'm going to talk about tarantula accuracies and which of those uh, four methods are really accurate in sexing them. Okay, dorsal adults. Hmm. I'm going to say these guys are about 75% accurate. I'll tell you why they're about that. In general, for dorsal sexing, uh, the more bulkier the body is on the tarantula, the more likely it to be female. But that's always not likely the case because you can have a uh, well-fed unsex specimen that are, may look very female-like turn to be a male. So if, if you guys remember, I used to have a Brachypelma Emilia. I used to have, well, I have an old video of um, me handling it to the tune of uh, Goldmine 007, um, the facility thing in Nintendo 64. And, um, from the look of the tarantula, it looked very female to me, and two molts after it became a mature male. What a slap in the face. So that's why you really can't rely on dorsal sexing to say whether or not it looks female or male. In general, mature females are more likely to be bigger bodied um, and shorter legged. Males are much more slender bodied and have much more longer legs. In um, some species, they possess tibial hooks that are found on the first pair of legs. So I'll give you an example. Here's my mature male uh, tap gigas. You can see those little hooks right here. And almost every tarantula has bulbous pedipalps. The pedipalps are those little feelers, those little two legs. And you can see they're swelled up. You have to be careful because even if they're mature male, not all of them possess these hooks. So for example, like the Cytheraceus crochehi, King Baboon, uh, the Pokies, H. Lovinum, don't have those. So you have to watch out. Next thing you can look for dorsal, um, for specimens, you know, like, um, hmm. Most of the old worlds, uh, terrestrials and arboreals, especially, and especially the new world arboreals, with exceptions of the pink toes, is looking for color. A pure not is an excellent example because he's not as colorful. Male, female pure natas are much more grayer than this. And here, here's another one. 
you wouldn't have guessed this is Apocotheria petersoni, the ghost ornamental, from the look of it. So you can see the males are much more brown colored and the females are colorful. You have the gray, the black, and the yellow. Here's a final example of my Tapanikinius gigas, the orange tree spider. You can see he's brown and females are much more orange, which gives a, the species its common name. You have to watch out for some species like the uh, bird eaters. Uh, for example, from the genus uh, Zenithus, Firmictopus, and uh, Pomphibedius, it is the males that actually are the prettier colors. Um, they get to having a great, nice looking highlight pink color. So, depending on the species, I would say it's between 75 to 85 percent accurate. What about dorsally for juvenile tarantulas? Well, juvenile tarantulas are I would say between two and three inches, well, they're about 40% accurate because the males and the females look almost exactly the same. Molts from tarantulas are 100% accurate. If you know what you're doing, you can actually sex a tarantula by its molt with 100% accuracy. So you do have to look for your sperm sac, which I will get into in a bit. Now, ventral sexing is um, probably the, my preferred method of sexing tarantulas. These are about 85% um, accurately, with a 15% uh, error of uncertainty. So, the ventral shots, I'll uh, draw. Okay, so for the ventral shot, you should be looking f for their abdomens. So, I'm going to draw two abdomens here. One and two. I'm going to call this one a male. I'm going to call this one female. Okay, so there's two things to look for in uh, mature males or any male tarantula for that matter. Um, you have to look for close book lungs. So the book lungs uh, would say they're right here. Um, you'll have one here and you have one here. One here and one here. So one you have to look for is close book lungs. So the second thing to look for is, um, well, if you have a good magnifying glass, you might be able to see it. But you'll see this upside down U shape that appears between the, sec the first pair of book lungs and the second pair of book lungs, just right about here. It's like a little triangle. So you have to look for upside down U shape. So that's what we can tell for ventral sexing for the males. Now for the females. So instead of having close book lungs, you'll have far book lungs. So they're much, or much more further apart Then the second thing to look for is your spermatheci, or just plain in layman's terms, your sperm sac. So your sperm sac would be this little slit right here, little slit between right here. This close up it will look like a little lip, so I'll draw a little lip here. There we go. So in here, that's your sperm sac or your your furrow. So this is what the male uses to inject the sperm into the female. When you introduce the male into the female's tank, um, how usually the courtship goes, you've probably seen in many of Tarantula Guy 1976 videos, and hopefully my videos, uh, when my um, G pull stripes and A vicularia female mature, uh, you'll see the female rear up. So what the male does is he hooks his legs, his first pair of legs, into the female's fangs. So this is the purpose of having those hooks. And he'll take his sperm, uh, which are stored in those uh, his feelers, which is the pedipalps, and then insert it into this little hole. And hopefully this will help uh, fertilize the female and we'll help her develop some eggs and hopefully an egg sac, then babies. 
we're going to look at some tarantulas and hopefully look at this in practice and see uh, if we can see this or not. Here's one example. This is my of the Calaria urticans, the Peru giant pink toe. And you can see the sperm sac. Uh, right, right about there, where the annotation is pointing to. If you see that, that's a female. So you can see another example, my Polcotheria formosa, the Salem ornamental. You can see how well the book lungs are further apart. And you can see the little sperm sac there. That's a female. Okay, so here's an example of a male. This is my Lassidora parahibana, the pink salmon bird ear, and you can see the little U shape right here. And you can see the book lungs are much more closer apart than most. Yeah. So that's how you s try to attempt to sex tarantulas ventrally. Here's my fat Pocothera metallica, the Goody Sapphire ornamental. And I'll, don't quote me this, but I think this is a male. Just because of its lack of uh, spermatheci from the ventral shot. Yeah. It's a shame that I really don't have a good molt for one of my tarantulas because um, they're either squinched up or can't really determine uh, what it's present, but you generally look for what I said in according to the ventral sexing. So, in summary, the molts are really 100% accurate if you want to determine your sex of the tarantula, but also the ventral just be as good, but not very accurate. Um, for ventral sexing, you probably could sex, um, I would say, a one and a half inch sling to about an adult with uh, Oh, a good 75% accuracy. Uh, the dorsally for the juvies, not that great because the males and the females look very similar to each other, so it's really hard to determine at first glance. Finally, for dorsal sexing uh, for adults, you know, you can get away with it because the female and the male um, do show some differences, as in the male has, um, you know, the first typical hooks on the first pair of book lungs and then it has the bulbous pedipalps but not all uh, T's have your tibial hooks like for example T blondie and king baboon and su such but unfortunately for you guys uh, the most of the old world um, terrestrials and the arboreals and also the new world arboreals with the exception of pink toes do show some sexual dimorphism where you look for fading colors in males. So I think that's about it. So hope you guys enjoy this sexing video and good luck sexing your team. Alright, peace.